Hello, welcome back to another tutorial from PH Studios. This is from the XNA Advanced Techniques series. In the last tutorial, we discussed the gameplay object, and I just walked you through the sample. I didn't actually build it from scratch. And I just discussed what everything a gameplay object needs architecture, position, velocity, acceleration, rotation, and all those things that every gameplay object should have in common, and creating a dedicated class for that. Now in this tutorial, we're just going to discuss a mouse and how to add that to your game. And if you go to the main website, you will see the mouse textures right away. Unless, if you're watching this a few weeks or months later, it'll be way behind on the blog post, but it should be on the content list, mouse textures. It may not be on the top, but it will be there. Just click that. And there have two versions available and you can download whichever one you want or both of them and use those in your game so go ahead and download those to anywhere on your computer and let's get started okay I saved them to my desktop so let's get started open up Visual Studio and let's create a new project and let's make it a 3.1 project Windows game 3.1 and let's call it mouse tutorial and after that's generated go back to your desktop select both of those or whichever one you want to use I'll use both of them in the tutorial so I can demonstrate them both drag them into your Visual Studio content portion and they will be in our project Okay, so now we have the mouse tutorial. We want to right click the project, go to add class. And this we want to call mouse object. And we'll do this in a class so it's nice and clean. We do not have 500 different codes inside of the game1.cs. We can just separate them in our classes so change this to public class mouse object so now the very first thing we need to do is we need a way to get the mouse state what buttons were pressed when they were pressed where the mouse position is and so on so in order to do that there is a built-in mouse state Class that is available through the XNA framework, and you need to add the using Microsoft.xna.framework.input. So now we have the mouse state. Now I like to add the previous and current, which means we can do things like if you remember a few tutorials back, we did an input system where we had is new key press and is key pressed which we used a previous keyboard state and a new current keyboard state and determined if it was a new key press it was currently pressed but in the previous keyboard state it was released so we're doing the exact same thing but with the mouse state so previous mouse state and current mouse state so those are the two fields we need and we do not need the property for those since we're just going to use those internally. So now we need the position of the mouse, where it is located currently. And we need to add the using Microsoft.xna.framework. And it's a vector2 position. And this needs a public property of vector2 capital position and it's get only we do not want to set it internally we only want to get it return position okay so now of course we need a way to identify what the mouse looks like and we just did that by dragging in our mouse textures but currently we do not have a way to add those into our mouse object so we need a texture 2D 
and we need to add the Microsoft.xna.framework.graphics using statement and let's just call it texture and that's not going to have any property at all so when we want to do in the next tutorial is have a clickable object which means if our mouse texture intersects with the game object that can be clickable we can perform certain tasks in order to do that we are going to use rectangular collision so we need a rectangle to identify the rectangle of our object and I discussed this in the basic training series where the rectangle is just going to be position x comma position y and the texture width comma texture height so the rectangle will be based upon the position and the texture that needs a public rectangle property capital rectangle and we need to use git only return rectangle okay so now let's get into the actual useful properties that we can use so just like the input system we need to do the same thing with the mouse so public bool left click which means we have now clicked the left mouse button that needs git only just like the input system we have created before return current mouse state dot left button this identifies the left button as a button state so we need double equals and if the button state is pressed which means the left button of the mouse has been pressed this will return true okay so now just like the input system we want to do something similar where if it's a new click where if the previous mouse state had the left click released but the current mouse state has the left button as pressed so just like the input system public bool new left click now just change the property name you can change these to whatever you wish make it more useful to fit your needs this is going to be git only and let's return left click so we're re we are returning this boolean which means the current mouse state has been pressed we do not need to copy all this for this we can just call this property and if it's true the current mouse state has the left click as pressed and previous mouse state dot left button is equal double equals button state dot released which means the left button has not been clicked in the previous game loop so this is a new click okay so that's it for this property now let's go on to the public bool and let's perform more actions that you can use if you wish and one of those is going to be left release where the button has been clicked in a previous mouse state but it is not clicked now which means we have released it between game loops so left release get a return not left click which means it's not clicked in the current mouse state and previous mouse state dot left button double equals button state dot pressed 